Howdy folks, welcome back for another Feature Friday. I'm your host Ryan Glover and this week we're going to be talking about doing bulk writes or bulk inserts into MongoDB. So when we last spoke, uh, what I've been working on is a revenue tracking feature inside of the SAS I'm building called Command. Uh, and as part of that, what I need to do is import a ton of data from third-party sources and specifically I'm currently working through importing data from Stripe, a payments platform. And so one of the things that I, I need to take into consideration is that depending on the type of customers that I get for this product, some are going to have a little bit of data and some are going to have a ton of data. And so one of the most common bottlenecks that you'll find in an application is at the database level. So uh, this is either reading from the database or in this case, writing to the database. So the problem that I bumped into is, and, and I can kind of show you in real time here, is that I have data coming back in very large chunks from Stripe. So one of the things that I'm fetching from Stripe is a log of all the events that have happened from the very first event on the account all the way back to today or all the way up to today. Uh, and so one of the problems with that is that, again, that event list could be 10 or it could be thousands. So in the case of my test data, so I have a, a test account set up for this, uh, I had 12 1,400 something test events, uh, which is fine, but the problem is that what I don't want to do when I finally have downloaded all of that data and go to put it in the database, what I don't want to do is have 12,000 separate database operations. So uh, what I mean by that is if you've, if you've ever worked with MongoDB before, uh, you've used the insert method. So you'll have like, uh, if you're from Meteor land or you've used pup, the, the boilerplate I'm using to build command, uh, you'll do something like collection name dot insert with uh, parentheses on the end to invoke it as a function. And then you'll pass whatever the, the document it is you want, you want to insert. Uh, so there's that. And then if you're coming from just regular Node.js or just regular JavaScript, it's going to be something like db dot collection parentheses, you pass the name of your collection dot insert. So same exact concept, just slightly different syntax for doing it. Uh, but the, the point being that if you do those individual inserts, they'll work, but they're going to bog down MongoDB and they're also going to bog down your server. And the reason why is that each one of those requests is a hop between the application and the database. And the database has to process that and respond in kind and say, oh, okay, I got it. Okay, I got it. And you think like for a handful of things, that's not that bad. But if you do that for 12,000 things, it's going to bottleneck your application. So thankfully, one of the nice features inside of MongoDB is the ability to do bulk writing. So this means that I can send one gigantic chunk of data and MongoDB is going to perform a single operation all at once. So the point being that I'm sending or I'm only making one request to the database as opposed to 12,000 separate ones. Uh, so this does work, uh, but I found that it's not terribly efficient. So uh, right here I've got the MongoDB documentation up. And they've got this, this method that you can use called bulk write, which is it's pretty convenient, all things considered. So it says, following code represents an unordered bulk write uh, with six operations. So uh, an unordered operation, basically you have two choices with a bulk write. You can do um, ordered, meaning whatever order you pass that set of operations to MongoDB as. So you're going to pass it an array of documents to insert. It's going to do those in the order that they exist in the array. So there's, there's one option. The other option is to do it unordered, which means that MongoDB will just kind of find the best path to uh, insert each of the documents in the array. Uh, and so if, you, if you're not dependent on the order that things need to go into the database, technically speaking, the unordered should be uh, a little more efficient. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm trying to do an unordered uh, batch insert or a bulk write. Uh, and so the idea here is that, okay, I should be able to do a certain number of operations. Now the documentation is saying the number of operations in each group cannot exceed the value of the max write batch size. And as of MongoDB 3.6, and I'm on 4.0 something, I don't, I don't remember exactly what, uh, but I should definitely have access to this. It says the value is 100,000. Uh, but what I found, and if we jump back over here, right before I, I started this, I did a test run of this. So we can see that I've got uh, this says 12,387 more items. So again, I took that chunk of 12,400 items and tried to insert them all at once. 
And so this is the bulk write result. So this is spitting out from right here. So I run the bulk write, and then I have a callback function telling me, hey, here's what happened. So this console log here is me getting this bulk write message back from MongoDB. So what this is saying is uh, everything worked out okay. There weren't any errors. Here are all of the IDs that I inserted. And this spits out in two ways. So it, it spits out here, but then it also gives you this massive list down here as an object. So uh, the thing I want to pay attention to, though, is you'll notice n insert at 4,313, insert account 4,313. But if we scroll all the way down here, well, wait a minute, there's more than 4,313. There's 12,486, or technically 12,487 because it's zero indexes. Uh, so uh, this was frustrating. I was like, well, what? I, based on the documentation here, I'm reading like, well, it should be 100,000 operations. And so I was looking here, and it says this is an example with six operations. So I was like, uh, okay, sanity check. Like, that makes sense. Each one of these is an operation. And we can see that what I'm doing back in the code here is I'm saying I've got an array of Stripe events. So this is the raw array of events that I, I've fetched from Stripe. So this is, I haven't changed them in any way. It's literally the raw data that I get back from Stripe. Uh, and then what I do is I map over them. So based on the documentation here, I'm saying, okay, for each operation that I want to do or each document that I want to insert, I have to follow this syntax. So it says insert one and then the document that I want to insert. And so what I've got here is I'm saying, okay, uh, bulk write events to insert. And so if we look before I pass that value, I'm mapping over each of those raw events and I'm saying, okay, wrap it with an object of insert one and then I pass the document I want to write. And here the, the big difference is that I'm manually setting the ID so that I don't get the, the dynamically generated object ID from MongoDB, so I'm doing that. And I'm also associating it with the customer's product ID. So the idea with command is that you can have multiple products and you might be importing data from different uh, Stripe accounts or different payment provider accounts, wherever you're at. Uh, so I want to know what that is and then this is going to be the raw event. So this is literally that raw data from Stripe. I'm just passing that along. So all told, not that complicated of a write. So I pass that in, do the ordered false, and get my response. So again, what's frustrating about this is that MongoDB has actually generated IDs for all 12,000, but it's only inserted 4,000. Now, I'm sure that there's a great answer to this, or there's a reason for this. This might be a configuration thing on my end. Uh, this might be uh, something I'm missing in the documentation or I'm misinterpreting this. Uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, but these are the types of situations where I'll start to say, like, well, do I really want to waste my time digging this much into it or do I just want to get it to work? And this is one of those situations where I want to get it to work as long as I don't notice any major bottleneck. Meaning if I run this code with uh, the patch that I'm about to show you, is it going to slow down the application entirely or is it going to be more or less the same as it would be if I did it um, exactly this way? Uh, and so uh, not to spoil the surprise, but I've, I've already kind of run through this and figured out the solution because uh, I, I was terribly frustrated by this. But um, the, the answer is that no, the, the performance difference, at least visually on screen, uh, meaning from the time I start an import to the time I end it, not very different. So uh, what we're going to do is tweak this slightly here. And I want to see what exactly I did. And I even left myself a note about what's going on here. So I'm going to turn this back on. And so what I've done, and let's comment this out. So this is the code that generated this result here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to comment that out. And so fortunately, the, the change isn't that much. It's not really anything complex. So the idea is that, well, uh, and this is, this is the other thing I found. So back here, this is talking about 100,000 write operations. So let's see if I can copy this. And we'll jump back here. So this is another part of the documentation. So there's, a, there's multiple ways to do bulk inserts in MongoDB. And this one, bulk, is talking about unordered operations having each group of operations can have at most 1,000 operations, which is pretty interesting. So we've got... One number over here for 100,000, one over here for 1,000, which is vastly different, um, and no mention of versions or anything like that, so it's not entirely clear. So 
what I did once I found this part of the documentation, so there's oh, a thousand operations, I was like, oh, okay, you know, that makes sense. So what I decided to do to solve this was to say, okay, well, I'm taking in my events, and again, this is the raw Stripe events that I get, and then I'm saying, all right, let's take, uh, here I'm using the lodash.chunk method, which I love. It's, it's a simple way to break large arrays into chunks or multiple arrays of a certain size. So what I'm saying here is I'm taking that exact same code that we just looked at. So same thing down here. The only difference is I've, I've removed the, have I removed the insert one? I have, but I know this works. So that must be conditional. I have to figure that out. Uh, but the point being, so you you may find different different results if you wrap this. So like down here, we've got insert one wrapping the document. Up here, I don't have it, but I just ran this and it works. So I'm guessing MongoDB figures it out or it defaults to insert one if it doesn't have it explicitly stated. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm saying take lodash dot or dot chunk, and I'm saying okay, based on that array of events that I've mapped over, again setting the ID the product ID and then the raw event data, break that into chunks of a thousand. So literally, it doesn't matter how many you have, if it's more than a thousand, at each break of a thousand, create a new chunk. So create a new array with only a thousand items in it. So that's what this is doing. So in the case of uh, the example data I've got over here where I'm talking about 12,486, what I'd expect back is about 13 chunks. So I have 12 explicit, so I have 12,000, so that would give me 12 chunks of 1,000 each, and then the remainder would be the final chunk, so I'd get 13 back. So not the happiest thing in the world based on the documentation. I would hope that it would behave how it should, but you know, that's how this stuff goes. So uh, what I've decided to do is say, okay, pass that data in to the bulk write. Again, I'm just passing all of the chunks. So actually, I didn't explain that well, so I'm saying, events to insert, so for each event to insert, and that's, that's not actually great, uh, let's, let's change this, there you go, live refactor, we'll say, uh, event chunks, yeah, that's a little bit better, and that'll make sense along with this comment, so I'm saying event chunks, so for each of those, so again, a chunk is up to a thousand items, so for each chunk of a thousand, I want to call to MongoDB and do a bulk write with that group of a thousand, and again, I'm keeping the order false. So really, the only difference between what I was doing before and what I'm doing now is that before I just had one massive array with all 12,000 objects. Now I have a series of smaller arrays in 1,000 uh, object or document groups. So that's the only difference. So um, now, in terms of performance or how this is going to behave, again, Anecdotally, this has worked fine. This is going to take me a little bit more profiling to understand like why, whether or not this is actually creating a bottleneck in the application. But anecdotally speaking, this, this worked out great. So what this allowed me to do is get past this bug where I was passing all 12,000, but only 4,000 of them were being inserted. And so I can confirm that having run this, and the only reason I'm not going to run it is because the import takes about two minutes, and I don't just want to sit here, you know, picking my nose. Uh, but I can confirm that it does go through, create the chunks, and then each of the chunks get inserted for a total of 12,487 records getting into the database. So uh, that's it. Uh, that, that's what I wanted to show you because this, this, I probably spent an hour on it last night and a little bit of time this morning, and it was pretty frustrating. But uh, fortunately, the, the fix, the temporary fix, I should say, uh, this may not end up being the permanent code, but the temporary fix was to do this chunking and then just pass each of those chunks to the bulk right. And fortunately, that got around the problem. So uh, if you're doing bulk inserts or you've, you've ever been curious, how do I handle large amounts of data in terms of writing it to the database? Hopefully this was helpful. Um, and if you're, you're more of a MongoDB expert than me, which hopefully you are, uh, please do leave a comment down below. Uh, or send a tweet on Twitter to at CLVRBGL. I always have to think through that one, CLVRBGL. Uh, and let me know, because uh, I would like to get this as tight as possible. Uh, but again, my concern here is, does it work? And does it work well enough? Okay, now let's keep moving on. And then later, especially with this, this little note up here, I can always come back and refactor it later without a, a huge cost. So that's always good. So 
that's going to do it for this week's Feature Friday, folks. Uh, as always, if you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below because I, I'd like to know that people are watching this and, and I want you to watch this and I want your feedback too. So if you, if you have ideas for Feature Fridays that you'd like to see or there's a problem that you're working on that you're not terribly certain how to solve, definitely definitely hit me up and let me know. Um, and also, if you, if you haven't already, hit the bell right next to the subscribe button so that way you'll get a, a notification. I'm going to try and get this right. I think it's up there. Yeah, hopefully hopefully the, the mirror operation here works out. So it's up there in that corner. You'll get a notification at the little bell icon uh, as soon as I, I put these out. So if you want to do that, give it a, give it a go. Uh, so, signing off for the HMS Beagle. I'll see you next week, folks.